Hey everyone, this is Raja from Charger Games and welcome back to this video. So in this video, we're going to learn about c scripting for 2D game development in Unity. Now we're going to build a lot of mini 2D projects in just 15 to 20 minutes. So I hope you're really excited for this and let's get started. So first of all, we're going to learn how to move this object or this player using my keyboard inputs up and down, left and right, just like a top down 2D controller. So here I have my player. I'm going to rename it to player and here I have the player script. You can right click, create a new C sharp script and rename it to player. Then I'm going to drag and drop my player script to player and double click to open it in Visual Studio. So now in my player script, first of all, we need a public float move speed variable. So this is the speed by which our player will move in the scene. Then we need two float variables, float x input and y input okay so this x input and this y input will decide how much input we are getting from the keyboard so that we can move our player accordingly all right now we're going to do all our movements inside this fixed update function instead of this update function so you're going to write fixed update because uh, this will give better results in our movements now inside the fixed update function first of all we need to get values inside this x input and y input variable so here we're going to write x input equals input dot get access horizontal so what this will do is this will get the input from our horizontal axis and in case of our keyboard the horizontal axis is the left and right arrow keys so depending on whether we are pressing the left or right arrow keys this will return a value of negative one positive 1 or 0 and using that value we can move our player accordingly to the left and right direction. The same way we're gonna say y input equals input dot get axis and here we're gonna write vertical okay. Now the vertical axis for our keyboard is the up and down arrow keys or the w and s arrow w and s keys. So whether you are pressing the up and down arrow keys or you're pressing w and s keys you will get a value between negative 1, positive 1 and 0 and you can move your player accordingly to that input. So now that we have got our inputs, it's time to actually put these inputs into our player movement. Now there are various ways by which you can move your player. In this case, we're going to use something called transform.translate function in Unity. So you're going to write transform.translate just like this. And this accepts a vector 3 value that means we need to put three different values for x y and z in order to move it in the x y and z direction now we want our player to move left and right and up and down so that is why we want to put values only in the x direction or x axis and in the y axis so for the x axis we're gonna say x input multiplied by move speed and for the y axis we're gonna say y input multiplied by move speed and for the z-axis, we're going to give a value of 0. Alright, so this way we have, we have given a value to the x and y-axis so that we can move our player or translate our player in the x and y-axis according to our inputs that we are getting from the keyboard. So now that we have done it, you can simply go ahead and save this and go back to Unity to check how it's working. So here in Unity, as you can see, here we have our player and here we have our player script. Now let's go and give a boom speed of let's say 0 0.5 and we can of course change it accordingly. Now you can click on play and now you will see I can move my player by pressing left and right arrow keys or the A and B arrow keys to the left and right direction and I can press the up and down arrow keys or the W and S arrow keys to move it on up and down axis. So this way we have created a player controller that can move to the up and down left and right direction very easily by writing these simple lines of code. Okay, so now we're going to learn how we can move this player towards our mouse pointer. So wherever our mouse pointer goes, we want our player to move in that direction. So let's see how we can do that. So here's our player script. So here what we get to do is first of all, we need to take our mouse input or the mouse position actually, and then we need to move our player towards the mouse position or to the mouse position. Okay, to do that inside the update function, first of all, here we're going to say vector3 mouse post. So this will store the position of our mouse. And here we're going to say vector3 mouse pose equals input dot mouse position. 
position. All right. So this input dot mouse position function gives us the value of our mouse position or wherever our mouse pointer is. But the problem is we cannot use this value in real game world because this one is in screen coordinates. So we need to convert it into world coordinates in order to use it in our game world. To do that, here we can write camera dot main dot screen to world point screen to world point and within these brackets we're gonna put our input dot mouse position so the screen to world point function will convert this value from screen coordinate to world coordinate so that we can use it in our real game now we need to do one more thing we need to here say mouse pose dot z equals 10f or any value greater than 1 okay you can give it five value or anything that you want so what happens is we need to put the z value a little bit forward than our camera otherwise we cannot see it if the value is same as our camera's z position okay so we need to put our player or put our mouse position in front of our camera so that we can see it through the camera that's why we're changing the z value okay so now that we have got the mouse position it's time to move our player towards the mouse position to do that we simply need to say transform dot position equals mouse pose okay so here we are setting our players position to same as our mouse position that we have calculated so now our player will always move towards the mouse or to the mouse position every time we run our game so let's save this and go back to unity and check how it's working so now as you can see wherever our mouse goes our player automatically moves to that point and that's how our mouse move code is working and our player is moving towards our mouse okay so now we can learn how we can move our player to the position wherever we click our mouse so let's say i click my mouse here i want to move my player here i click my mouse here i want to move it here so that's what we're going to do so let's see how we can do that and here's our player script so now we're going to create a separate function that will help us to understand how this works differently so here we're going to create a new function void click to move so this function will will actually control all the functionalities for clicking to move and we're going to call this function from our fixed update function so that this one works so inside this what you're going to do is first of all here we're going to create a new variable we're going to call it vector to target pose so this will be the position or the target position we where we actually want our player to move all right so as you can see here we already have our mouse position so here what you're gonna do is whenever our player clicks the mouse so to detect that we're gonna say if input dot get mouse button down zero so this will this will be true whenever we click our mouse on the screen since so this zero means the zero button of our mouse or the left button of our mouse okay so whenever we left click on the screen we simply want to get our target position to same as the mouse position so here we're gonna say target pose equals mouse pose okay so now our target position is same as our mouse position so now all we need to do is move our player towards this target position okay to do that inside this click to move function we're going to use a function called vector to dot move towards so this function slowly moves a value from one value to another value okay so for first value we're going to give our current position which is transform dot position and then we're going to give our target position where we actually want to move so here we're going to write target pose okay and then we need to write by how much rate we want to but how much rate or by how much speed we want to move from our current position to the target position for that we're going to give our move speed value all right so this way this function will slowly move from this value to this value by this amount of speed and finally every frame every frame after getting the value we need to store it into our actual position so that our player's position actually changes every frame so here we need to write transform dot position equals this one okay so this way we are slowly moving our current position value 
to the target position value with this amount and then we are storing the updated value into our current position okay so now that we have written this code now all we need to do is instead of writing this code again and again we need to call this click move function from our fixed update function okay so here we're gonna simply write click to move so this way we call a function so we are calling this function from here so that this function will be called every frame or every fixed update frame and our whenever we click our mouse our target position will be generated and this way this will happen now one thing we need to do is from the last tutorial we need to actually comment this code out otherwise our player will always be positioned towards our mouse that's what we don't want in this case so now let's save this go back to unity and now we will see whenever I click our mouse automatically our player moves towards that position so it doesn't matter wherever I click our mouse automatically the player's position gets updated and goes to that position so our code is working okay so now we're gonna do simple 2d platformer movement or 2d left and right movement on a platformer using physics controls okay so let's get started so here we have two new sprites so first of all I'm gonna use this ground sprite and it must be a tiled or symmetric image now I'm gonna rename it to ground you can skip this step as well now from the draw mode I'm gonna choose tiled and then I'm gonna use this rect selection tool and then I'm gonna drag it to make it bigger something like this alright now I'm gonna move it to the bottom then we're gonna add a physics 2d collider so here I'm gonna go to add component physics 2d and we're gonna add a box collider 2d and as you can see here we have a collider I'm gonna click on this edit collider button and drag it to make it bigger or you can simply go ahead and change the size of the X directly okay so now that we have the collider it can detect collisions and our player will not go through it now we're gonna select our player we're gonna rename this one to player then we're gonna go to add component physics 2d and we're gonna add a first of all we're gonna add a rigid body 2d because this is what we need to use for physics inputs or physics systems or any kind of physics control then we're gonna go to add component physics 2d and this time we're gonna add a box collider 2 to it so box collider 2d then we are gonna use this edit collider button and make it smaller something like this now we can click on play and you will see the player will drop and it will simply stop right here okay so now that we have this ready let's go ahead and write our player input controls so let's open up our scripts folder and drag and drop our player script onto this and then I'm gonna double click to open our player script okay so here we're gonna create a new function void platformer control or platformer move okay so inside this platformer move we need to use something called a rigid body to move our player so get to get the rigid body here we're gonna create a new variable rigid body 2d rb and then inside the void awake function we're gonna say rb equals get component rigid body 2d okay so now we have got access to the rigid body 2d that is attached to our player using this rb variable so here we need to say rb dot velocity equals vector 2 dot right that means we are going to add a velocity to that right direction and by how much speed we want to say move speed okay and then we want to multiply it with x input all right so as you can see here we are already getting the x input and we're gonna multiply it with our move speed and move it towards the right direction so this right will work as left as well when our x input will become negative that means whenever we press the left arrow key actually our x input will become negative and that way this value will become negative as well and it will move our player to the left direction okay so now that we have done it let's go ahead and save this go back to unity and before that we need to call this function so here we're gonna call our platformer move function right here so that it gets called and we're gonna comment out our click to move function okay so now let's go back to unity here we have our player controller here we have our move speed let's give a value of 15 and let's click on play and as you can see this is giving us the wrong results and that's because we are adding the velocity in every frame but that's not what we're gonna do so let's go ahead and open up our script again so here as you can see we are adding the velocity directly so instead of that what we need to do is we need to say new vector 2 and for the x value we're gonna give this value 
and for the y value we're going to simply say rb dot velocity dot y okay so this way what we are doing is we are keeping the y velocity same but we are modifying the x velocity okay now here we need to simply remove this vector to dot right because we don't need that anymore because we are already adding the speed in the x axis and for the y axis we are keeping its same value okay so y axis we are keeping the value same and for the x input or for the x axis we are giving this value so now let's save this go back to unity select our player controller and now as you can see I can move the player left and right and it is moving way too fast so in order to do that in order to control that we're gonna change the speed to let's say let's say 5 and now if I click on play as you can see now it's moving with a different speed you can also make it smaller like let's say 0 0.5 or 2 I think 2 should work good so as you can see now the player moves and it moves left and right 0 0.5 should work good as well so as you can see now it moves left and right with this speed and it pretty much works so our player controller with this physics input is working okay so now we're gonna learn how we can flip our player to left and right so if you click on play so here as you can see even when we are moving to the left the player is not looking towards the left it's still looking towards the right now an easy way to use the an easy way to flip the player is to use the flip x and y functionalities from sprite renderer as you can see here we have the player character and from the sprite renderer if we click on this flip x as you can see it gets flipped and if i uncheck it it gets uh, unflipped as well so this is what we're going to use in our code to flip our player so let's open our player controller script and here we're going to create a new function we're going to call it void flip player okay so now inside this function we need to actually flip our player so first of all we need to get access to the sprite renderer component for that we're going to create a new variable sprite renderer and we're going to name this one sp and inside our awake function we're going to say sp equals get component sprite renderer okay so now this way we have got access to the sprite renderer component inside our sp variable now inside the flip player function we need to check if rb.velocity.x is less than 0.1f that means if our x velocity is less than negative 0.1 that means we are moving to the left only then we need to flip our player so for that we're going to say sp.flipx equals true and when this is not happening else if rb.velocity.x is greater than 0.1f that means if it is moving towards the right direction then we're going to say sp.flipx equals false okay so whenever it's moving towards the left we'll make the flip x true whenever it is moving towards the right we're going to make the flip x false now we need to call this function every frame so inside the fixed update here we're going to call the flip player function so that it checks for the flipping player checks for flipping the player every frame now we can save it go back to unity and now as you can see every time I press the left button and when the player moves left it automatically flips to the left direction and whenever I move to the right it automatically rotates to the right direction and gets flipped to the right direction so this way our player is moving and it is also getting flipped so thank you so much for watching this video about 2D game development and C Sharp scripting in Unity. I hope you really enjoyed and learned a lot of new things in this video. So thank you so much. If you want to learn more and build some more cool stuff, you can check out all my different courses from the links given in the description of this video. So thank you so much for watching. This is Raja from Charger Games. Keep learning and I'm going to see you in the next videos.